Arts in Depth, a one-half-hour televised program presented to you by the Cultural Council of Indian River County. I'm Barbara Hoffman, Executive Director of the Cultural Council and your host in, for Arts in Depth. Thank you for watching. Quote, in everything I do, I work to change the way people see and interact with the world. If I sensitize one person to the value of nature that was before unnoticed, if I move one person to perceive and wonder at the interrelationships of science with other areas of knowledge that was before unrealized, if I inspire ecological responsibility and bring joy to one person's mundane life, and if I spark passion in one person such that he or she works to share the enthusiasm and the knowledge about nature and science with others, I succeed." End of quote. Those are the words of my guest today, Molly Steinwald, Executive Director of the Environmental Learning Center in Indian River Co County. Welcome, Molly. What a pleasure it is to have you on Arts in Depth. Thank Before you. accepting the director position at ELC less than a year ago, you are Director of Science and Education and Research at Phipps Conservatory and Botanical Gardens in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. What attracted you to this position in Vero Beach? Well, the first thing that attracted me was a phone call out of the blue. So it was very exciting. I had not known of Vero Beach and did not know of the Environmental Learning Center. Uh, but when I was, I was very in intrigued by the idea. So when I came down, for one, I fell in love with the community and with the ELC, um, but I saw that there's a huge opportunity here for doing a great deal of good, and I've really, uh, in my life, try not to become complacent, and I felt that there could be so much here that I could be using my abilities and passion and, and talents for. The uh, Vero Beach community is very interesting. I've traditionally worked in urban environments, not traditionally, mm -hmm. but most recently, mm -hmm. and trying to connect people to nature and get them to be enthusiastic about life and, and caring for others. And Vero Beach is this beautiful, broad, expansive oceanfront area. But the, um, the needs of people here and the environmental issues here are actually quite similar to other places I've worked. And I've mm -hmm. never been in a community where things are so socioeconomically disparate. And with that, um, you have people in very, very different situations, but ultimately everything that connects people is nature. And everything that also affects people is, is their own health and their own well-being. And I see an opportunity with the ELC. I, I really saw it, it's done so much, but it's truly like a blank slate in many ways because it connects everybody. It's in the middle of the lagoon, which has major environmental issues, but it's also you know between the mainland and, and the island, and I'm learning how different those populations can be. And the ELC has so many resources now that we can build on to really transform the world. I think not only locally, but do things that are replicable mm -hmm. you know, statewide and nationally to really heal the relationship between people and the environment. Well, I know that we are very, very excited about having you in our community with your strong background and oh. in so many diverse areas that, are in the, you know, that then can have a major impact not only on the Environmental Learning Center, but on the lagoon. Oh yeah, And absolutely. on all of the other environmental areas and parks and so forth mm -hmm. in our community. I, so we welcome you. Thank you very much. I think it's, it's wonderful because the ELC, when I tell people where, where I work, I say, well, it's a 64-acre island campus in the middle of a lagoon, you know, a half mile from the ocean. And it's an idyllic scenario, but at the same time, I really try to strive for people to realize that nature isn't a place that you go to. You don't have to go to the ELC to experience nature. Nature is actually everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I see a real opportunity with the ELC to be transforming what we're doing to, to change the way nature education is traditionally done so that it relates to people in their potentially very small backyards. Well, we're excited about what your plans are. Thank you. And we'll be back in a few moments. Attention, this important message is for any American who is about to turn 65 years of age or older. Nation's Helpline has Medicare Supplement Insurance news that may benefit you, your family, or someone you know. Most Americans who are about to turn 65 years old know they need Medicare Supplement Insurance, even if they already have Medicare. 
The Nation's Helpline Medicare Supplement Team can guide you and help answer your Medicare questions. We can also help you find the right Medicare supplement policy from the best insurance companies around. So if you or someone you know is about to turn 65 years or older, call Nation's Helpline today. Don't spend more than you have to on Medicare supplement insurance. Call Nation's Helpline today and find out how easy it is to protect the ones you love. Even if you already have Medicare, this is a program for you. The call and quote is free and there are no obligations. Call today. Please call 800-632-2804. That is 800-632-2804. And I'm back with Molly Steinwald, Executive Director of the Environmental Learning Center. ELC was founded in 1988 by a group of environmentally conscious pioneers from the Pelican Island Mm -hmm. Audubon Society who lived in our community and cherished the wonders of nature that thrive in the Indian River Lagoon. Share with us a bit of that history, its growth, and talk about the features today that are on that 64-acre 64, uh, 64 yeah. island campus. Well, um, so the ELC has gone through tremendous growth since the beginning when it was founded. It didn't actually have a campus. The, the office was actually, I believe, on Cardinal Drive, which I now know where that is. And um, shortly after they founded, they hired their first executive director. And um, realizing that's 26 years ago now, I'm its second executive director. So it's amazing oh that she has been there, Holly Dill, for the entire time. Um, phenomenal. Um, after it was founded, what they had to do, the island was actually filled with invasive species. So they went through a tremendous process with so many volunteers of removing invasive species, planting native ones and allowing the native ones to come back. And over the years, they built a number of different buildings on site. They grew the programs so that they have a very strong relationship. We have a very, I say they, right? I'm, I'm still so new at this. Uh, a very strong relationship with the school district. and. Um, with that, though, we the campus itself, I was going to say, oh, so 2004, it was hit by two hurricanes. Uh, yes. Jean and Francis had some pretty substantial damage. And then in 2008 as well, it uh, we suffered a pretty substantial fire from a lightning strike, burned down uh, a number of our buildings, um, a, a building complex that was rebuilt in 2010. And... Um, a number of catastrophes, you know, those are essentially catastrophes, right? But they were also great opportunities for growth and, and mm-hmm. re-envisioning the organization. So um, Holly Dill, the previous director, she retired just last year. I came yes. on nine months ago. And the campus itself is beautiful and amazing. And I think a lot of people only think about the ELC primarily as school field trip place. But we have a number of buildings, um, p- waterside pavilions, places, I would say extensive walking trails where people can just come and be with nature. We have places where people can practice yoga and meditation if they wanted to. We have um, extensive number of canoes. We have a pontoon boat. We have a beautiful welcome center. And we also have a space where the Laura Riding Jackson House is on site, which yes. we're starting to work well with that organization. So it is a major campus. It is. And pretty exciting. And the walkways, I mean, I've been out there several times when we've done some plein air painting um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, on the campus. And that obviously is a favorite for many of our artists. It's so beautiful. Yes. But the walkways are, are tremendous. How many? How many feet of walkway do you have? You know, it's hilarious. That's one of the questions that I, I had when I first showed up. And we are in the process of remeasuring them right now because we really <laughs> want to communicate that message because they're they're phenomenal. And just that tagline, I want to be able to tell people what that is. But it's through butterfly gardens and, uh, you know, native plant trails and everything else. So it's not just the boardwalks and the mangroves. It's the rest of the campus as well. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And I know that our viewers will all want to come to oh, ELC yeah. to see what we're talking absolutely. about. And we'll be back in a few moments. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. Freddie Wilfrick and Gregory Simpson invite you to Spotlight Indian River weeknights at 6.30 and 10.30. 
I'm back again with Molly Steinwald, Executive Director of ELC. Today, ELC offers hundreds of programs and events for all ages and abilities on its campus. The programs range from summer camps to ecology adventures to tank encounters. Tell us a bit about these programs. All right, so those are actually touch tanks where you touch things, not real tanks, which is good, <laughs> good to clarify. People won't want to come. Um, so tell, tell you about the programs. Well, you know, one of the, the things that we do when trying to, to decide what programs we want is we want to make them joyful and participatory, mm -hmm. cross-disciplinary, and, and really uh, life-changing. And with that, we try to make sure that everything that we offer to people, either it's a formal program that you sign up for, or it's you just coming in informally experiencing the campus, is you're in contact with something alive, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're learning something that will help you to become a better environmental steward and a better citizen um, for humanity as well, mm -hmm. um, because everything is, is very much related. We have a um, wonderful number of canoe trips people can sign up for. We have a, a beautiful aquarium, a place where people can actually touch things, but also just huge aquaria that have native fish here that people can simply look at. And, you know, looking at aquaria has been shown mm -hmm. to reduce stress. Um, oh, really? Yes. We, and we have a number of mm -hmm. um, eco festivals that we do, or we have a traditional eco fest that happens in the spring, but we're also going to be doing National Estuaries Day this actually this coming month, and we are going to be um, part, uh, incorporating a plein air art um, event Good. in that, which is exciting. We really want to be pulling in different people who aren't necessarily traditional environmentalists or ecologists. Mm -hmm. um, we really want to be bringing everybody into the, um, to the ex experience at the ELC. We have a, a phenomenal little uh, children's nature play area where the kids can be playing directly with, you know, pine codes, building fairy houses, you know, uh. getting mud, you know, making mud pies, that sort of a thing. And, and there's so much research showing that that's truly beneficial for children's development. So we want to expand that program mm -hmm. as well. How many children do you reach? You know, where, so another thing that we're doing is doing more stringent counting of things because mm -hmm. it's a, a common thing when you're so busy doing stuff, you don't actually um, count things. But we, we service about 25,000 people right now, and the majority of them are children. And those are, those are children that get affected for the rest of their life, which is wonderful. That's a lot. That is a large number. Are most of them from um, Indian River County. Most of them are from Indian River County, um, uh -huh. and I'm really excited being able to create more opportunities at the ELC where we have people that see it also as essentially a tourist destination, so that we have a, a reach beyond just Indian River. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. And do you um, uh, you work closely with the school system? You say? We, we work very closely with the school system. All of, uh, third and fourth graders currently come out to the ELC for a learning excursion once a year. Mm -hmm. And um, what do, why do you feel that it is so critically important that the children learn at a young age about our ecology? Um, a lot of people's values are um, affected and they're, they're developed essentially at a very young age. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, ecologically, we need to do it, but also the tremendous amount of research about child development and being outside, it's just growing. So it's important for their own well-being. It must be really special to see their eyes light up and their enthusiasm oh. as they experience yes. this. That's tr absolutely wonderful. Yes. Well, thank you, Molly. We will be back again after a short break. The Furniture Man is a locally owned business that has served the needs of the community of Vera Beach and Indian River County for over 30 years. Here at The Furniture Man, we offer fine pieces to furnish each and every room of your home. Specializing in Floridian style, come browse our selection of bedroom, dining room, patio, and living room. Come explore over 10,000 square feet of showroom where you can find mattresses, recliners, sofas, dining, and more. Visit us at 673 US 1 in Vero Beach, Monday through Saturday, for all of your furniture needs. Watch Chamber Buzz at 6 and 10 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays on VeroBuzzTV.com. I'm back with Molly Steinwald. The mission of ELC is to provide stimulating environmental education programs that instill an understanding of the natural world 
enrich people's lives and inspire participants to be active stewards of surrounding natural resources. As a privately funded, nonprofit 501c3 organization, you must rely on memberships and donations to conduct your educational, your environmental education and stewardship programs. What are the various ways in which an individual or a business can support ELC? All right, well, for one, we're actually in the process of revising our mission statement, and I think that's an exciting thing to be able mm -hmm. to tell you now, where we are putting um, human well-being on the same level as environmental health because they are interconnected, and also including in the mission statement, the future one that we're in the process of revising, that um, we want to be really working with people who have minimal access to nature. Mm -hmm. And with that, I would say that different businesses and individuals that could help support the ELC. Of course, as a nonprofit, you always want to say money. We need money, right? <laughs> right. Uh, and, and that's a way that you can do that, uh, straight financial donations. But we have a number of membership levels. They're very high cate category membership levels. Uh, Society for Environmental Education is one for higher end donors. Mm -hmm. um, but there are ways where we have a number of events coming up. We have a golf tournament that we have every yes. year. Uh -huh. We have a winter gala this year. It's going to be called the Secret Garden, very much about connecting with nature. And um, individuals and businesses can be sponsors for that. And more information about both of those events are on our website with different sponsorship packages. But businesses and individuals can also help, I think, by spreading the word about us, right? Allowing us to have our promotional materials in their areas, giving us individual connections to other mm -hmm. people. You know, some people will say, you know, I, I don't have much that I can give financially, but you know, I know some phenomenal people or a great mm -hmm. group that you should be able to work with. And that stuff helps us enormously. Uh, we also have a wish list, which if you go on our mm -hmm. site, you can see all of these different specific items. We need equipment that people could purchase. And we have a new program with Amazon where um, Amazon Smile, it's called, if you go to Amazon, if you Google Amazon Smile, go there, choose Environmental Learning Center to be a beneficiary, uh -huh. then a percentage of your purchase goes to the ELC. Um, and we also have a new thing that we're trying this year. We've, we've actually done two, we're setting up two different trips uh, to Cuba. They are fundraisers yeah. where people can spend a week in Cuba learning about the ecology of the area. And there's information about that on our, our website too, which is discoverelc.org. And uh, the majority of the funding for that trip will be going directly to the ELC. So we're trying to experiment in different ways that people can participate. But ultimately, it comes down to if you are interested and excited about what we're doing, especially with an expanded mission of, of human well-being, being a part of it and working with minimal access to nature um, mm -hmm. populations, mm -hmm. call us, email us with an idea, because you know we're open to any ideas that are out there. Just a bit more about the um, the Northern Cuba tour. What what do you um, expect to to learn from that? Well, trip? Uh, um, it's I think it's gonna be March seventeenth to twenty fifth, uh, and with that you will learn an enormous about the birds, the plants, the landscape of the area, and the culture, mm -hmm. and. There's a full itinerary on the web too, so that you can actually learn specifically about what you would be doing each day. And we had one trip that filled up in 48 hours, and the second oh, one nice. is out and it's about half filled now. So if you want to come, then go to our <laughs> website. Well, that sounds like a wonderful, wonderful tour, but um, there are so many ways to help ELC oh, accomplish yeah. its mission, and we encourage all of you to go on their website and check it out. Thank we'll you. We'll be back shortly. Since 1951, Globe Life and Accident Insurance Company has been providing families with life insurance protection. One dollar covers the first month of coverage whether you choose from $5,000 up to $100,000 of coverage. First day coverage means no waiting periods, easy to buy, no medical exam, no risk 30 day money back guarantee. Up to $150,000 of accidental death coverage can be added to your policy. Globe Life makes buying life insurance easy. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hi, I'm Penny Chandler. I'm, I'm Freddie Woolfolk. I am Barbara Hoffman. And I'm Gregory Simpson. I'm here with Police Chief David Curry. You're in good company on VeroBuzzTV.com, Vero Beach's local TV station on the internet. I just love, love it. it. Tell a friend. Yeah. We love y'all! Molly, to accomplish your, your mission, ELC, relies upon volunteers. 
what are some of the opportunities available and how does one become a volunteer? All right, well, we have a myriad of volunteer opportunities. Um, many of the volunteers, we have 227 volunteers, which blows me away. We're a staff of um, 11 people total, seven full-time, four, four part-time, and then uh, incredible volunteer corps with an incredible volunteer coordinator named Nancy. If you are interested in volunteering, you should contact Nancy Puglio, and you can go on our website and find her contact information. Um, we have volunteers that work substantially in our education programs, assisting our educators in working with children's groups, uh, adult education programs. We have volunteers who work on uh, landscaping and groundskeeping and maintenance, and that's always a great need, especially with a campus at large. Administrative, people don't think often about that, but we always need people that can be helping with uh, maintaining our website, with folding you know, letters that are going out to potential donors or our collaborators. Uh, we have volunteers who come to us with ideas that we never thought that we needed help with. And the oh. more that we can be relying on volunteers, it enables the staff to not feel quite so afraid because oh. there's so much to be done. Um, and I, I think you mentioned too what, what I see as the future of the, the ELC. Yes. Okay. Um, I would see the future of the ELC as being a place where it's truly a center for human and environmental well-being. And with that, I see opportunities for working with universities uh, in areas where we're researching basic ecological work. We're, we're supporting researchers essentially in ecological work that helps environmental issues and education research and actually human health research where it's both psychological and physical well-being because so much work is being done with contact with nature and how that can influence people and when people are well they're also caring for other things including the environment. I see the ELC as a place where it will become a destination and people can come grab a glass of wine, walk around the mangrove, boardwalks in the evening. So a place for, for younger adults to come and have a, a wonderful time. Uh -huh. And I really want to be working with social service agencies in the community, bringing, bringing nature to them, uh, working with populations that aren't necessarily able to get outside at all anymore, but being able to plant a mangrove and care for it for years and have that replanted in the lagoon is a very empowering experience for mm -hmm. someone who can't necessarily travel to the ELC. Mm -hmm. And that helps the environment, it also helps them. Do you have collaborative relationships with um, uh, um, other educational institutions and, and research organizations? Um, I, I do around the country. Mm -hmm. And um, one of them right now is, is working on an it's, I'm going to start very soon as a National Science Foundation funded program which is looking at ways that you can be doing environmental education in very cutting edge manners that are working with populations like um, truckers, right? How do you get truckers to learn about migratory bird patterns? Well, find a commonality and they, they migrate, birds migrate, that type of a thing. So that's just mm -hmm. one example. And we're building relationships here with the Land Trust. We've had them before, we're growing them. We had a college internship this summer for the first time oh, where okay. two college interns worked with the Land Trust half the time out on their properties. And they also worked with us in teaching our camps with our educators. So we're building relationships. Well, it's a massive program, so it's with exciting. the financial and volunteer support of hundreds of people <laughs> and the collaborative relationships, you're making a mark on the map. We're very hopeful. Okay. Thank you. We'll be back for our final segment. Stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics. In downtown Vero Beach, owner Patty Callahan prints it all. From color and black and white copies to blueprints, banners, signs, prints of paintings, and fine art. Patty makes restorations and creates outstanding graphic designs. Call Patty at 770-1521 or stop by Patty's Printing and Graphics at 2345 14th Avenue. Stop by for all of your printing needs at Patty's Printing and Graphics across from the old railroad station in downtown Vero Beach. Join Marsha Littlejohn nightly at 5 and 9 on VeroBuzzTV.com. Molly, you have such a diverse and interesting background with so many interests, many of which you have woven into your personal core mission. Please tell us about Molly Steinwald. Um, all right. Uh, people often think that 
photography, art, uh, science, research, environmental justice, uh, environmental education, and uh, things like that, all of these scattered things essentially that I've done over the years are very, are very unrelated, or they could be. They, on the surface mm -hmm. they're perceived, but actually I think that there's a very common core thread to that, and that would be looking outside of yourself. Uh, looking outside of yourself and learning and understanding and valuing the world around you. And that's living things, that's you know the, the concrete environment. And I've always been fascinated by, by the beauty of the world. A very small nature, large scale nature. And I've also been very, very passionate from a young age of, of helping others. And that's an ant on the sidewalk or that's another, that's another person. Uh -huh. uh, and um, you know, I, I grew up one of 12 kids, I'm the third oldest, and my father got a doctorate in philosophy and a doctorate in literature, and my mother didn't, didn't um, go to college. My, my husband was uh, homeless for, for various years of his life as a child growing up as well, and so he had lived without running water and, and things like that, and so those were things that, you know, I was a free lunch program kid, he went through a substantial hardship. They form who you are. My parents didn't uh, let us watch much TV. Wonderful, you know, that's, that's huge. And together, my, my husband and I, we homeschool. Uh, he homeschools two children, and they're almost 11 and 13. And we try to truly instill in them uh, a joy and wonder and value of, of the world around them and other people. And the idea is to really I would say um, take little, uh, learn much, and give much back. And I think that that's the core thread of that. And it's been truly exciting. I was drawn to science. My parents weren't environmentalists or scientists. But I was drawn to science because of the, the beauty of it all. And that beauty can draw you into something greater, a greater world out there. And I see opportunities for truly helping people that are lonely, that are impoverished, or that feel like they're stuck in a job that they hate, you can open up their eyes to things that are right right here and right around them and make them feel better, but also make them feel that they can do something good for the world around them. And it can be amazing. Learning a science fact, instead of it being really stale, but realizing it's phenomenal and amazing. Do you realize what goes into this, this leaf? You know, that sort of thing. That generates excitement and beauty and wonder. And, and that's what I live for. I can't be complacent. <laughs> How exciting <laughs> to know that you can change, that you can make such a change and an impact on someone's life through the work oh, that you're doing. That has you. to be so rewarding. Everybody can. You know, things are very small, but in a very small step, you can do great good that you might not ever know. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. thank you. Thank you, Molly, Executive Director of the Environmental Learning Center for talking with us today. And thank you, viewers, for our watching Arts in Depth presented by the Cultural Council of Indian River County. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money.